Hey guys, Peter here. Welcome back to the third devlog for my pixel art survival sandbox. It's been a while since the last one, but in that time I've been laying out the foundations for entities and NPCs, as well as making the dialogue and notification systems. As a quick side note, I do now have a Discord server, links in the description if you're interested. Well, it's been nearly two months since the last video, so surely I've made loads of progress, right? Right? Anyway, the first step with the NPCs was to uh, copy-paste the player and remove the controls. They were looking a bit dumb though, and I had to manually place them in the editor, which wouldn't be ideal for gameplay. The spawning issue seemed easier than making an intelligent AI, so that's what I did first. It should have been a fairly simple algorithm. I basically just search through every house, check a few things, and it wasn't actually all that difficult to get working. Things only started to go wrong when I got to the actual spawning them in bit, which I figured people might complain about if I forgot. You see, up until now, everything in my world had been stationary, and well, I think you can see where this is going. Obviously, NPCs and rocks are slightly different, and how do you make your data move? Well, it's actually easy, you just, um... Yeah, so this part ended up taking a bit longer than expected. The approach I've ended up with isn't ideal, but basically everything is controlled by an NPC manager script, which holds two things. A list of all NPCs active in the scene, as well as a rather complicated dictionary mapping chunks to lists of NPC data for the inactive ones. Whenever I begin unloading chunks, I'll scan every active NPC, and if they're in one of the chunks despawning, add them to the dictionary. On the flip side, when I load a chunk, I check if there are any NPCs at that chunk in the dictionary, and if so, spawn them. When I was writing it, it did seem unnecessarily complicated, but it turned out to be very helpful when I started making the doors, which were, to be honest, a nightmare to get working. I planned to focus solely on the NPCs this time and do pathfinding in the next episode, but I ended up having to do a bit of both. Anyway, I'm sure you're all getting sick of me ranting about boring technical stuff, so on to the more interesting bits. As a wise man once said, what's the point of an NPC that doesn't speak? Well, maybe no one said that, but... For the dialogue system, I had two options. I could get an asset online, which had actually been tried and tested, or I could code my own one from scratch. The first option seemed way easier and more reliable, so naturally I went with the second one. In all seriousness though, I had to give the system a lot more consideration than you might think. Questions like how often would the dialogue branch off, should the player speak or not, should NPCs remember user choices, and so on. After trying a few various things though I ended up with this, which I'm fairly happy with. One major requirement for the NPCs was that they needed to be modular. Whilst I haven't actually gone into the specifics of anyone yet, and all the things you see here are just placeholders. I knew it would be very important to ensure that I had to do minimal work when it came around to it. The way I'm handling the AI is with these routines. I can define activities for the NPCs to do, each of which has a time, type and location. For instance, I can specify that they should, at night time, go to sleep in location bed. I can then cycle between different routines depending on certain factors. Later on, for example, I may make certain things season dependent, but I'll have to see. Currently though, there is a bigger problem. There is no way to tell when an NPC moved in, and I knew I'd need some way of alerting the player of other things sometime in the future, so I did a bit of research into what kinds of notifications I could add. I could display everything as messages in a simple chat box, or I could go for a more diegetic approach having some sort of mailbox. There were a few possibilities, but in the end, I went with these toast notifications because they were the clearest and most dynamic. Actually implementing them was surprisingly easy, although working with UI in Unity is often quite annoying, so I did most of it through code. There's loads more I could talk about, but it feels like I'm just listing system after system. I made a few more performance improvements and stuff, but I haven't actually done too much of the trading system as that'll require a rework of the inventory, and I won't be focusing on the pathfinding until next time, so think of this as more of a part 1 to the NPCs. On that topic though, the next devlog should focus mostly on animals. 
The world still feels a bit empty, so I'll be working on implementing my own pathfinding system for reasons I'll discuss then, as well as making the sprites and animations for a few animals. I can't really give any estimates as to how long that'll take, but I may release another video or two on random things in the meantime. That's it for now though, if you enjoyed, subscribing would help out a lot, and if you want to check out the Discord server, links in the description. Thanks for watching, see you all in the next one.